2020 has been yet another successful year for BT's mobile operator EE, with continued development leading to persistent number one leadership. This is as a result of a rich portfolio of developments during the course of the year, including in mitigation to Huawei, which is why we are stood here. So during the course of 2020, EE started to trial vendor replacements, including from Huawei to Ericsson in Belfast. Across the water in England, Stourbridge near Birmingham was home to the first EE Huawei to Nokia vendor swap trial. However, it wasn't long before these vendor swaps became mainstream, with Hull rapidly being converted from Huawei to Nokia through December and London getting the Huawei to Ericsson treatment in certain clusters towards the end of 2020 as well. Despite the resource intensive nature of these trials and vendor swaps, by mid-December EE's 5G location count had reached 112 towns and cities throughout the UK. To make this even more impressive, when EE deploys 5G to a place, they properly deploy it, bringing contiguous 5G coverage to the area and not simply just adding 5G to one site and pretty much calling it a day. This clearly leads to a much better experience for the customer, but does lead to a much increased resource requirement in order to properly colour in the 5G coverage in that location. There have also been a wide range of incremental works happening on the network as well. Firstly, on the 1800 MHz band, EE increased their spectrum re-farming to bring up to 2x40 MHz of the band to 4G, where before it was maximum 2x35. This new reform for 2020 leaves only 2x5 MHz for GSM in the areas that it's deployed. And these areas have become very common with most major cities now having the 2x40 MHz as 4G in them, enabling very good download and upload performance, especially with the increased uplink carry aggregation combinations at 40 MHz uplink that it enables. EE have also been busy carrying out routine radio upgrades, especially in their Nokia areas, replacing the older style radio modules with Airscale, which brings 4x4 MIMO and increased 4G spectrum onto the sites. And it's not just upgrading existing sites either. EE has been building a whole array of new sites most notably for the Southwestern Railway Network. And these sites don't just serve the rail lines, they actually fill in quite a lot of community coverage holes as well. But aside from big macro sites and multi-sector servers, EE have also been deploying small cells on phone boxes in a number of major cities. And these tend to be dual carrier 4G with EARFCN 1791 and 3026, providing a substantial amount of 4G spectrum for nice performance and substantial offload. However, by far the most interesting for me has been the 700 MHz enabling works. Across all of EE's vendor zones, so Huawei, Ericsson and Nokia, We've been seeing either real-life deployment of radios for 700 megahertz or definitive planning for it in future. The significance of this is clear. That an upcoming spectrum auction where 700 megahertz will be available for bidding, and this is also on the context that EE has very limited low band holdings currently, and therefore will be wanting to acquire more low band spectrum. The deployment of the radios combined with that spectrum situation means that I think we'll pretty soon be seeing some quite extensive 700 MHz deployment 
The final topic I have for you is EE on the Jubilee Line underground system. In 2020, EE deployed an absurdly capable spectrum deployment in both the tunnels and the stations, which delivers absolutely sterling throughputs no matter where you are within the covered segments. Thanks for watching this video about EE in 2020. I'm sorry it's taken so long to make all of these, but the work rotor has been pretty challenging. In fact, it's been so long into 2021 now that EE have already won another major award, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of that this year as well.